Now the next topic is migraine. Now what is migraine? So migraine is the unilateral throbbing headache with pulsatile in nature. Uh, or like different types of migraine which we have are the migraine with aura which is also called as the classical migraine. And with aura means there are some prodromal symptoms but this is a very uncommon type of migraine. The next one is migraine without any aura and this is the more common type of migraine that is experienced. And this is present in about 80 to 90 percent of the patients who have migraine. They usually have this migraine without aura. Now the migraine, uh, the symptoms, they get triggered by you know certain stimuli. And what are these triggers? The triggers can be loud noise or music then there can be bright lights stress insomnia so all of these can trigger an attack of migraine Another thing is that with uh, the symptoms as such, the patient experiencing headache, pain, there can also be accompanying symptoms like nausea and vomiting. So let's discuss the pathophysiology of migraine first before going on to the drugs which are effective against it. Now in the pathophysiology of migraine, this is said to be of neurovascular in nature so from the neuron uh, the most important uh, you know this uh, neuropeptide which is responsible is your CGRP so there is a trigger whether it is a loud noise whether it is a loud sound or insomnia etc it is going to stimulate the trigeminal nerve and when that trigeminal nerve gets stimulated, it causes the release of the most important mediator, which is your CGRP or we call it as calcitonin gene related peptide, CGRP. Now this calcitonin gene related peptide, what is it going to do? It is acting on the receptors present on these meningeal blood vessels. So let's draw the receptors here on the meningeal blood vessels. And as we've discussed in the topic of serotonin, that the important receptors in the blood vessels are your 5-HT1. Now the 1B, 1D is more responsible here. And what happens here? So this CGRP is going to act on these receptors and it is going to cause vasodilatation. So vasodilatation. So as this vasodilation occurs, you know, when something is stretched, it will go and leads to leaking of the plasma to the surroundings and when this plasma is leaked to the surroundings we call it as edema so there's going to be edema which is going to press on the nerves and the patient experiences excruciating pain the throbbing pulsatile pain now this is what happens in the pathophysiology of migraine now what we are going to do is we are going to now do about the drugs which can tackle this. Now it depends whether the patient is suffering from mild attack, moderate attack or in a severe attack of migraine. So if it is just a mild to moderate migraine, here we can treat the patient by giving simple analgesics, NSAIDs. And alongside, we can add antiemetics because if there is nausea vomiting also, 
then you can add antiemetics along with simple analgesics, your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. In case the treatment is of acute severe migraine because it has a severity and this severity cannot be only tackled by simple analgesics. So you have to go now a step further. So again recalling the drugs which did uh, in the serotonin chapter, the drugs which act on the 5-HT, 1-B, 1-D subtype. So they are your triptans. So triptans are the drug of choice for severe migraine. Then the other option which is available to us is your ergot alkaloids. Ergot alkaloids. So now let's discuss about these triptans because they are very important for the examination point of view. So let's discuss about them. Now triptans, what they are going to do? What is their mechanism of action first? They are going to inhibit, number one, the release of CGRP. That's the first mechanism. And then they are going to cause vasoconstriction of the blood vessels, of the cranial blood vessels and others also in the body. Uh, but here, if we are just talking about migraine, they cause vasoconstriction of the meningeal blood vessels. And you, re and you remember that uh, when there is vasodilatation leads into edema. So if you stop that vasodilatation, then the edema will not be there and it will not press upon the surrounding structures. So the one mechanism is they inhibit the release of the most important neuropeptide. Most important neuropeptide which is responsible for the vasodilatation and second it will cause vasoconstriction of the blood vessels. Now not only of the blood vessels of the meninges it causes a vasoconstriction of the blood vessels in the whole of the body. So because of this reason these drugs are contraindicated in patients of ischemic heart disease okay? and they cannot be given in patients of hypertension. Other thing is important thing about them is that they suppress the nausea and vomiting. They suppress the nausea and vomiting so that is an added benefit for these patients of migraine. So various drugs here you have as the name is with us it is triptans. So every drug will end with the word triptan. So we have suma triptan, nara triptan, frova triptan, riza triptan, zolmi. Uh, a uh, few points about these drugs. Sumatriptan is available as oral dosage form. It is available subcutaneously also and it is availa available intranasally also. All these dosage forms are available. Frova, F, far, it goes far, it is the longest acting. And Riza, it is the fastest acting, we'll say, out of the lot. So. Important uh, thing to remember about these drugs is that they should not be given within 24 hour hours of giving ergot alkaloids. They have the same action as vasoconstriction. So we should never combine these two drugs together within 24 hours because then there will be dangerous vasoconstriction in the body. Now the next uh, we are going to talk about is your ergot alkaloids. So ergot alkaloids, these are your partial agonist 
antagonist at 5-HT receptors. Partial agonist antagonist at 5-HT receptors. These are derived from claviceps purpurea and because as I told you they are very very potent vasoconstrictions uh, constrictors so they can cause dry gangrene of hands and feet and this property is called as ergotism because this is vasoconstrictive actions they are also leading to a lot of miscarriages so this is contraindicated in pregnancy and they can cause even the convulsions.